All right, students, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the features for Logger Pro, especially using Logger Pro with a microphone. So first, make sure that you see sound pressure in the top left. That means the microphone is hooked up. And let's, <clears throat> very first thing, let's go to experiment zero. Now it reads zero as it should be when there's no sound. And we'll make a sound, then we'll hit collect. So we can see these waves. They are pretty short. So I want to show you first how you can adjust the scales. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do this. One is that you can just click and you can pull it up like that. And then you can also um, stretch them out. I'm going to stretch down. I'm going to stretch up. I'm going to stretch down. I'm going to stretch up. And etc. That's one way. You can also highlight and zoom. All I'm doing is just highlighting, I'm highlighting a rectangular area. And when I click on the magnifying glass at the top, it'll zoom in on those. Okay, the next feature I want to show you besides adjusting the scale is how to store the latest run. So go to experiment, store latest run. Now this stays in the background. I can do a new collection on top of that. So here's my new collection. And if I want to store that one as well, I go to experiment, store latest run. And I'll do one more. Um, super high frequency, as you can see. Now, those lines are kind of all sticking together. So that's because they're thick lines. And if you want to turn on or turn off thick lines, you go to Preferences, File Preferences. Right here, Thick Graph Trace Lines. If I turn it off, then everything becomes more thin. That may or may not be to your advantage. It's helpful for the rest of the people in your group to see the graphs if you have preferences, thick lines turned on. Okay, now let's say that last run wasn't good and I want to get rid of it. Here's how you do it. You go to data, delete data set. Oh, actually, I never stored it. Okay, let's just say I did store it. And then I realized, wait, we don't really want that. Then you go to data, delete data set, run three, and it's gone. If you ever forget which um, which is the order that you did them in, obviously we know red was first and then we did blue later, but as you start doing more graphs on top of each other, you might kind of forget. So one thing you can do is go back and look at the data in the data columns here. You'll see red was the first one and then blue was the second one. As you're doing an experiment, you want to make sure that you're writing down the conditions for the red, the conditions for the blue, so that you can make some reasonable conclusions. Okay, I wanted to show you one more thing and that is how to make measurements of graphs on the screen. So here's what you do. You simply click and you drag. Right now, as I drag, I am dragging over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I dragged over ten crests. And in doing so, I can actually measure the time that it takes for those ten waves. And the way I do it is, I look on the bottom here, and it reads for me the delta T, which was 0 0.008441. If I wanted to know the time for one of those waves, I would just simply divide by 10. If I wanted to measure the amplitude of the wave, I would just click on the crest, and I would drag down to a trough. And now, on the bottom left, it will give me the delta Y. And that's what I want to show you. I think some of these skills will come in handy tomorrow in your lab. See you then.